Okay, so first off, I want to apologise about the longer than usual wait between this video and the fire red video. The truth is, I had another video that I got all the footage for, as well as all the audio recorded, but whenever I started editing it all together, I found that I wasn't happy with the overall quality of it, and decided to shelve the idea for the time being. That's not to say that I won't upload that video, but I want to go back and fix a few things so it's up to the quality that I'm happy with. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into why I'm doing this challenge. It's Halloween. In all seriousness though, I tend to play through this game at least once a year around Halloween, so I thought this time, why don't I make things a bit more interesting? So today we're going to find out, can you beat Luigi's Mansion without taking any damage? Luigi's Mansion, all things considered, is a fairly short game, easily beatable in under 4 hours, especially if you've played through the game before like I have. It's also not a very difficult game, but I also said the very same thing about the Arkham games before the no damage runs, and we all know how those went. So this time, I know better than to tempt fate. The rules are also fairly similar to the Arkham challenges as you can probably imagine, and they are. I am not allowed to take damage of any kind. If I do, then I will need to quit out and reload my save, as unlike Batman, Luigi's Mansion doesn't have any kind of checkpoint system. I'll get more into that in just a bit. I have also made the rule that I have to capture every portrait ghost. These are the bosses of the game. There are a few that are optional and can be ignored, but for this run I need to capture them all to win. Those are the only two rules as this is a pretty straightforward challenge, so with that out of the way, let's get started. Upon immediately starting the game, we see what might be the scariest thing ever when Luigi's skin begins to disappear around his mouth. And people say this isn't a horror game. Once we arrive at the Spencer Mansion, we find ourselves separated from the other members of Stars. So first thing we need to do is try all the doors before this conveniently unfinished ghost model drops a key that will let us actually begin the plot. When we go into the room, we are jumped by a ghost, and rightfully so as we are technically trespassing in his house. Thankfully though, Luigi is saved by Professor Egad as he is able to give the ghost the good SUCK. After beating a hasty retreat, we will get back at the lab where it is time for the first ghost encounter in the tutorial. So this is where the challenge really begins. And since this is just a tutorial, we don't actually have to catch any of the ghosts, so whenever I'm in a situation with more than one here, I just flash them with a torch, so they will just disappear and so not take any chances. Egad then asks us to go to the gallery, which is pointless as it is quite literally empty, so we decline so we can just get to the mansion and start the game proper. Back at the mansion, we can see a crying toad who Luigi nearly punches straight in the face while trying to console him. That said, these toads are one of the only two ways that we can save our progress, so they are pretty important to this run, as I will need to visit them regularly, otherwise I risk losing a lot of progress if I take damage. On to the first proper encounters of the game, and as you can imagine, there isn't a whole lot to talk about here, as they rarely team up on you other than this one instance where I just flashed one of them to go away and give me time to deal with the other ones. This, by the way, is basically the strategy I used for any rooms with multiple encounters from this point on. With the first three rooms out of the way, we can now fight our first mini-boss, or portrait ghost as they're called, with Mr. Thornberry here. Since he doesn't actually attack us, we spend some time stealing his money and taking pictures of nearby floor cheese. Neville is pretty easy to deal with as I just wedge myself between the wall and this lamp and very quickly drain all of his health in a matter of seconds. And with that over with, it's time to move on to his wife. There is no lamp in this room, but that doesn't stop me from just backing up into the corner and doing exactly what I just did to Neville, leading to another quick and easy encounter. With the two mini bosses out of the way, all that was left was the Area 1 main boss, which is the baby, who is, ironically, a lot harder than his parents for some reason. We do this by simply walking up to the child, hitting it square in the jaw with what looks to be a pretty solid ball and then getting transported to a different dimension where we can now do battle with this super child. Well, almost immediately after starting the fight, Chauncey gets his own back by ricocheting a ball off the side of his crib and it hits us, resulting in our first reset. What's annoying about this is like I said at the beginning, you can't just restart an encounter like you could in Batman, so instead I have to quit out to the main menu and reload my last save, which will always start you back in the entryway of the mansion. This isn't annoying yet, but it'll become pretty aggravating later in the game when I'm going to need to trek further up the mansion. Oh, and also, like an idiot, I didn't save before the fight with Chauncey, so I had to go back and capture the other two portrait ghosts again real quick. I also find that you could skip the cutscene that would usually happen after the Linda fight where you can hear Chauncey crying by using the mirror in her room to teleport back to the start of the mansion. Also, yes, mirrors are teleporters, moving on. I died a few more times to Chauncey, as well as this time where I stepped on a rat which literally spawned underneath my foot. Thank you, game. The problem isn't so much avoiding his attacks, it's whenever any ghost, be it a basic enemy or a boss, pulls away from you too suddenly, it will drain a few of your hit points. Now normally, that's not a big deal, as you're never going to lose a life from it. Here, however, it's like playing Russian Roulette with the game. Do I be greedy and try and suck up the ghost fully now and risk taking damage, or do I play it safe and take off a small amount of health and play the long game? If you're smart, you would of course go for the latter. I, however, am not. Well, after four attempts of not getting very far at all, I managed to somehow pull it off on the fifth attempt, despite the fact I didn't change my strategy at all. I guess Luigi is just too stubborn to die. With that, we can head back to the lab, use the ghost portrait to get the ghost back to normal and get our oh-so-important results.
Upon starting Area 2, I immediately step on another route, so I know this is going to be an overall pleasant experience already. The first room we have to clear just has two grabbers in it, but they are the versions that don't damage you, so I quite literally cannot fail here. If only every room was like this. On my way to the ballroom, I made sure to suck up any rats, partially for safety and partially for revenge. The Shy Guy ghosts are easy enough to get by, so long as you stay out of the range of their bidents. When the happy couple shows up, I immediately try to kill them, assuming ghosts can even be killed, and much like the battle with Chauncey, I get too greedy and end up taking damage mid-suction and need to reset. This also happens on my next try with the Shy Guys. You would think I'd learnt my lesson by now, seeing how that's three deaths this way, but you would be wrong. I do get them rather easily on my next try by just backing into the corner like I did with the other portrait ghosts and slowly chipping away at their health. I thought the room where you release the booze would end up being a lot more difficult because it introduces the grabbers that can hurt you, but you have more than enough room to move around for that to not be a real issue. Also, does this danger sign look like Batman to anybody else? I know it's meant to be the shadow of a boo behind some bars, but all I ever see is the bat coil. Well, this is where we release all the booze and in turn extend this from a 2 hour adventure to a 3 hour one. That being said, however, for this run, the booze actually helped me save time. Let me explain. Every time you rid a room of all its ghosts and it lights up, a boo will then spawn somewhere in that room, and once you find it and then catch it, Ega will then call you up and ask if you want to save. Basically, this means now I don't have to remember to go find a toad after I clear every room unless I want to risk losing a bunch of progress. So I go and grab all the boos from Area 1 and the rooms from Area 2 I already cleared, and then went and fished up a key from this toilet. You know, thinking about it, this is probably one of the only times that the Mario Bros actually do anything that even remotely resembles plumbing in their games. With this key, we can now enter the mirror room, and once we clear the ghost, we get access to our first upgrade. A flamethrower! What this actually lets us do right now is light the butler's candle so that he'll run into his room, but first I go and clean out the laundry room and grab Mario's spare cap, which we will require later. I also tried to get into the secret room that's through this mouse hole in the butler's room. The only problem however is that every time I went through, Luigi would be stuck in this animation where he hits the treasure chest and while that was happening I'd be attacked by bats and have to reset. I tried this a few times before I decided that it just would not be possible. Thankfully though, there is nothing that is required in that room. The only thing of worth is it means I can't catch all the boos, meaning I probably won't get the highest rank at the end of the game. Oh well, it's not like it stops me from fighting all the bosses or anything. So with that, I give Shivers the light and then send him towards the light, which gives us the key to get to Melody. Melody's whole gimmick is she will play a song and we have to guess what it is. It's always the same as far as I'm aware, so it's rather simple, all things considered. Now we run into the first optional ghost, Mr. Lugs. He looks intimidating, but he can't really move, so after we steal his food and the poor man tuckers himself out, he goes down just as easy as any other portrait ghost we have beaten so far. That said, we do get some fat stacks for beating him, which is nice. In the next room, we get the ability to shoot water from our vacuum cleaner, which, from personal experience, having water inside a vacuum usually tends to break it, but it shows what I know. All this leads to us putting out a fire so Luigi can go outside and beat up this poor dog. Jokes aside, the dog isn't the hard part, it's the skeleton ghost that just gets in your way is what's annoying, as you have to take him out to be able to capture the dog. Three attempts later, and I managed to put down Old Yeller and decide to head back and save up at Toad, as now all we have left to do is fight the Area 2 boss. But first we need to get past the Boneyard, which has its own problems. Bogmire wasn't too bad, all things considered, so long as you make sure to get rid of the majority of his minions before trying to suck him up, then you'll be fine. It did take me a few attempts, but it was mostly just due to bad luck. Like, on my first go, I managed to get him down to just 13 hit points with no issues, and then I got extremely unlucky when Zeus decided he just did not like me today. So, after just a few more quick attempts, where the worst part was honestly just walking back, I easily claimed victory and could now once again return to the lab and make our way to the next floor of the mansion. With the key we got from Bogmire, we can now enter the courtyard where we learn that Mario is now stuck inside a painting, which is a problem for some reason, even though jumping in and out of paintings was something he literally did in the game before this, but whatever. Not going to sugarcoat this, I had a miserable time trying to fight Biff Atlas. I couldn't even tell you why either. He is usually a pretty simple fight, but for whatever reason I just kept taking damage. That said, one of them was 100% my fault, and I can't deny that. On my fifth attempt, I played as cautiously as I possibly could and was able to get through unscathed. And then of course, caught the boo and saved up so I wouldn't have to worry about having to do all that over again. Now in the room just above the gym, Luigi channels his inner Lionel Richie, as well as becoming the Avatar by mastering the last element at his disposal, which is ice. 
The ice element is actually super useful to have because you can use it to briefly freeze booze in place, making it much simpler to catch them. As the title card a few moments ago said, Area 3 is mostly just about getting Myers items that are scattered throughout the mansion. The first one we can grab up here is just past the ghost in this room. In what is probably one of the strangest parts of the game, Luigi looks through a telescope, sees the moon, and then immediately grabs a falling meteor of some kind and then uses it to blow the moon in half. Now with everyone's days numbered, seriously look up all the things that could happen if the moon were destroyed, Luigi has basically just brought Armageddon to the people of the Mushroom Kingdom, we make our way across the Rainbow Road and retrieve Mario Star. I hope it was worth all the lives we have just ruined. Anyway, while still on this floor, I go and deal with the ghost in the shower so that we can get the key that opens the last area down the ground floor. I go back to the entryway now so I can save up even though there is still more to do on the second floor. That said, I end up having to leave Slim Bankshot here for later as he is incredibly quick and aggressive when you're trying to capture him and it led to me taking damage by being dragged around more than a few times. Thankfully though, like Mr. Lugs, he is optional so we can just head on into the room next to him to get the item we need. This room made my hands sweat for this run. The ghosts are all completely invisible and the only way to gauge whereabouts they might be is their shadows on the projector. But when there is more than one of them after you, that can be pretty nerve wracking. I got rather lucky though and beat it with no resets and got Mario's third glove. That's right, I said third glove. We can clearly see in the painting he is wearing a set of gloves and the item here is a single glove, not a spare set. You know, Mario's really weird, maybe he deserved to be kidnapped. The next three ghosts of this area are incredibly easy so I'm going to go over this rather fast. The grandma goes down after we pelt her with three yarn balls, even though she seems to have heat vision she puts up next no fight. From there we head back to area 1 and take out the last members of the family, the twins. The hide and seek game can be annoying in your first playthrough but the trick is the boxes they hide in will shake so finding them and then from there capturing them is no issue. After beating the twins we find the last of Myers items that we can take to the fortune teller and after getting mild carpal tunnel syndrome from mashing through her dialogue for 5 straight minutes she somewhat willingly lets us capture her. Now from here we would usually head to the area 3 boss but we have one small problem to take care of. First couple of tries go the same as before he is just so fast when trying to escape that I get hurt by him dragging us. On the third try I do what I keep saying I should be doing and let him go before he has a chance to do that and I'm finally able to capture him in just 2 cycles. I lost a fair few more attempts in the room right here before the boss because I kept slipping over banana peels like a damn klutz. Now on to Bulazas and this was so, so underwhelming. He only beat me once and even on the attempt where he did, I got him down to his very last boo and just got careless. So next time around I just played things a bit more patiently and just like that we were on to the final act of the game. To start off area 4 I went back to the garden so I could rip this solid gold diamond out of this plant. There's really no reason for me to be doing this because as I said the money is not important, but Luigi here loves capitalism. Returning to the balcony where we just fought Bulasas, as soon as we get to open the door on the far side a shocking twist comes out of nowhere and the mansion has a blackout, meaning the ghosts are now quite literally everywhere. Now usually you're meant to go to this telephone room and find out from Egad that you need to catch a ghost called Uncle Grimly and all you know about him is that he enjoys rooms with mirrors. Now, first time around, this can be incredibly frustrating as, unless you haven't noticed, almost every other room has a goddamn mirror in it. Lucky for me, however, when I was a kid I played through this game so many times I got the little playthrough counter up to 99. So in other words, as soon as the blackout happened, I just teleported my ass back to the front of the mansion and went straight to the wardrobe room and dealt with Grimly before he knew what hit him, and had the lights back on in no time. Clearing out the basement is easy enough, but this is the part of the game now where all the boos start to have a rather obnoxious amount of health. And as such, they tend to fly off into other rooms, meaning they aren't so useful for saving the game anymore, and that alone makes Area 4 a bit more difficult compared to the others. Also, another small gripe with Area 4 is just its design. The rooms you visit are all either in the basement or on the third floor. This means you're having to do a lot of this. It takes nearly 2 minutes to walk all the way from the bottom of the mansion to the top. Now while that doesn't sound like much, it begins to add up fast when you have to do it every time you take damage. And oh boy did I take damage a lot during this part of the game. The toy soldiers alone here caused me to reset 3 times. Pretty self explanatory really, there are 3 of them so of course it's a pain to beat all 3 without taking a single point of damage. I did get fairly lucky with the boo though as he never went out into the hallway and just stayed within these 2 rooms which made my life a lot easier. Dealing with the ghosts on the roof is rather trivial, seeing how we have access to the flamethrower here. Rather than going down the chimney now though, I grab the key and go back down the lift so I can clear out the ghosts in the room with all the suits of night armour. In the room next door we have another optional portrait ghost, Jarvis. And like just what is he? All the portrait ghosts up to this point with the exception of Bogmire and the dog have clearly resembled humans but Jarvis? Jarvis looks like something you'd find in Legend of Zelda. 
Regardless, he ends up hurting us, so I have to reset. Thankfully though, I did catch the boo in the room with the knight, so I didn't lose any progress, and better yet, I still have the key from that room. So rather than going back up to fight Jarvis, I just head back down to the basement to do the other two rooms we had to finish up down there. The pipe room, my god, talk about things going so poorly, so quickly. You have to try and deal with multiple grabbers, as well as these little flying green blobs that just love to kamikaze you when you're in the middle of trying to capture the other ghosts. I quickly found that the winning strategy was to just get the ice element, and then just back up into the corner and use that on the grabbers and only stopping to suck up one of the blobs if they got too close. Now into the final room in the basement, not counting the final boss room of course, we have to deal with this frozen ghost. Not too much to say here other than the icicles falling from the ceiling along with this sudden introduction of ice physics for this one room can make him slightly tedious to capture but nothing too out of the ordinary this late in the game. Admittedly the ice physics do make grabbing this key a lot more fun than it should be. Okay, now for the worst part of the run. Van Gore. Simply put, this fight has you face a gauntlet of enemies. You have to fight at least three of just about every ghost you've encountered up to this point, all before you even get a chance to take out Van Gore. With that being said, I don't think I need to explain why that is difficult when you need to get past it without taking any damage. The real kicker is that I actually was able to get past all the ghosts and capture him on my third attempt, but then, like an idiot, I tried to capture the boo right afterwards, and of course it hit me, meaning I had to reset, make the journey all the way back up, and try again, and again, and again, and again. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? In the end, I had to reset 12 times here before I was finally able to capture him for a second time. So that means I spent probably close to 24 minutes just walking up to the third floor alone. That said, I was overly cautious on my last attempt, so as soon as he was captured, rather than trying to capture the boo again, I instead used a mirror in the next room to take me back to Toad so I could save the game and not have to worry about doing that again. Now usually from here you would go and fight the final boss, but due to how I have been doing things up until now, I need to make one last trip to the top of the house to capture two more portrait ghosts as well as the last few boos I've yet to get. To not risk repeating myself, I reset three more times to the boo in Van Gore's room as well as twice to Jarvis before being able to clear out the top floor of the mansion. The boo was mainly down to luck to make sure he didn't just fly into me, and as for Jarvis, I just made sure to whittle his health down little by little and stop any time I even thought one of his jars was going to hit me. After they were out of the way, I made my way back to the roof, and on the way I had this weird glitch where the animations overlapped of Luigi capturing a boo as well as him going up the lift. From there I went down the chimney into the treasure room, captured some ghosts, made some bank, got a key, and then made my way back up to the second floor to get the last portrait ghost. I did get overwhelmed in the sitting room simply because I forgot just how many of the gold ghosts spawn the instant you light these candles and truth be told it scared the crap out of me how suddenly it happened. The final ghost has truly mastered the ways of the Richie as she is able to not only walk on the ceiling but sleep on it. Well after Luigi waterboards her for information we capture her with no issues. The only way she can hurt you is with these clown toys when she throws them at you but if you suck them up then she is literally powerless to stop you. With that we get the last two boos we can capture in this run and make our way back to the basement for the final battle with King Boo. Not before we steal all the money he has hidden in his secret altar though. Sorry Mario, this will just take a second. The battle looks pretty climactic, seeing how it may be taking place in hell after all, but if you've ever played the game, you know what I mean when I say this is one of the easiest fights in the game, and I mean that even in regards to this challenge. All of King Boozer's attacks are incredibly telegraphed, so they are easy to avoid with even a little bit of prior knowledge. I only had to reset once and it was clearly my fault as for some reason I couldn't decide which way to move when he was doing his stomp attack and as a result I got squished. On the very next try however I ran into zero problems and after three cycles of blowing Bowser's head off, sweet Jesus, I captured King Boo and with that the final boss is defeated, Mario is saved and I can confirm that yes you can indeed beat Luigi's Mansion without taking any damage. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this challenge. Like I said at the beginning, I absolutely love this game. I make sure to play it at least once a year when I have the time. So getting to revisit it in this way, while difficult in parts, made for a fulfilling experience, especially after getting past difficult sections such as Van Gore. And with that, that's going to be the end of this challenge run video. If you enjoyed, consider giving the video a like, and if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel so that you'll know when I upload my next challenge video. My name's Nerbit, and I'll see y'all in the next video.